I won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Science can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Science can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. Is anybody here? Oh! What is all of this? Ahem, my mysterious friend. It appears you've mixed up your ups and downs. And from where I stand, it looks like you've mixed them up, my friend. It's entirely plausible. I admit I do have problems orienting myself in this space. As do I. Therefore, I propose a compromise. Go ahead, then. Now that's much better. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? I'm embarrassed to admit, but, um, I don't remember who I am. Your face does seem very familiar, though. Well, that might be quite helpful, because I, too, have plum forgotten my name as well. Okay. All right, let me try to remember now. Gaga, mm, ba, ba, no, no, okay, I know, I've got it, it's Barry. Exactly. And you? Uh, how could I forget? You're Olga. Phenomenal. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Olga, my friend, what has happened to us, and where are we? It seems as though we have become the victims of some kind of experiment. Hmm, it does seem like that. If only we could know which one. Let's try to reconstruct the events of what happened. Aha! IQ do you do? <laughs> Forgive me if I sounded a little strange there. You probably don't know, after all, what IQ is, do you? Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to alarm you, but I think the reality of your recollections is a little distorted. Surely our friends look a little different. Yes, indeed. You probably don't know, after all, what IQ is, do you? There you go. That's closer to the truth, I think. So what happened next? Naturally, I thought it my duty to enlighten everyone present. Well, yes, of course. Who wouldn't? Some may say intelligence is worth more than gold. But if we more or less understand everything about gold, then what is intelligence? How do we measure it? How do we determine if someone is intelligent or, if you will, not very? Perhaps most simply would be that in most situations, an intelligent person understands what he needs to do. In Latin, understanding is translated as intellectus. So we could say that an intelligent person has a lot of intellect, and a dumb person, very little. In order to measure the amount of intellect, scientists created a test consisting of questions which require one to discern logical patterns and sequences of shapes. Having completed these tasks, it becomes possible to measure the amount of intellect one has. This is called your intelligence quotient and is abbreviated as IQ. That having been said, the IQ test measures your cognitive abilities and not your actual level of knowledge, meaning that someone with a PhD has not an advantage in the test over an ordinary child and may even have less intellect. Those with the most intellect are those who answer the greatest number of questions accurately and score the most points. A person with an average intellect scores around 100 points. The unintelligent, less than 70, and geniuses, over 130. 
I discovered one such IQ test in Spheroscope and decided to measure my own intellect. Guess how many points I scored? Ta-da! Oops. Sorry. Ta-da! That means on Earth, only 3% of the population is more intelligent than I am. How do you like that? And I thought that one of the signs of great intellect was modesty. Ah, well, modesty is for those who don't score over 130 points. Are you planning on waving those results around all the time now? Certainly not. No, I'll hang them on this wall so everyone can see how smart I am. My friend, measuring your smarts with a test is superficial and futile. IQ tests have been established for decades, and those who criticize it are just people who are not capable of scoring more than 70 points. Um, right. That's why yesterday you told us the results of another test showed your actual age was 16 years old. Yes, that's because I'm young at heart. And instead of criticizing, maybe you should measure your own IQ, if you're willing to risk it, that is. Hmm. I'll risk it. Ah! I... Hmm. <laughs> okay. No. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was easy. Yep. There you go. No. Yep. There. Oh. Hmm. No need to congratulate me. After all, I didn't even really need to think that much. Maybe someone else would like to try measuring his or her IQ as well. I didn't remember that at all. Well, I think it was very funny. <laughs> well, that's easy for you to say, my cheerful genius friend. Imagine how it feels being the most dim-witted member of the crew. Well, we were playing a joke. <laughs> it's easy to become a genius if you know all of the answers in advance. <laughs> joke? It was a joke? Absolutely. Admit it, it knocked your self-righteousness down a little bit. A little bit? In my grief, I burned all of my doctoral theses and resigned from all the scientific organizations I was a member of. And you're telling me it's a joke? Hmm, maybe it was a bit cruel, but it did give you a very brilliant idea. Dare I say that it was a genius? You're right. After all, an IQ of 130 is still an IQ of 130. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. In my oh. free time, I thought a lot about it, and I've reached some definitive conclusions. It's time to stop dividing society based on the level of their intellect. It's inhumane and demeaning. So what are you suggesting instead? I suggest creating an artificial intelligence of increased genius. Compared to it, we will all look stupid, and it won't matter how many points you got on your IQ test. It sounds tempting. Yes, yes, very tempting. No longer will we feel flawed, and we'll be helped by technology that digitalizes the brain. We often compare the brain with the work of a computer without realizing how accurate a comparison that is. It's so accurate that our intelligence can literally be recorded on a hard drive of a computer with all of our ideas, thoughts, and memories. If we examine the brain under a microscope, then we'll see an enormous amount of nerve cells. These nerve cells interact with each other like the components of a computer, exchanging impulses which transfer information. Our consciousness and reason are comprised of this. But how can we transfer this information into a computer? We need to more closely examine the principles of communication between nerve cells. 
Mark's shorter nerve cell appendages collect information from neighboring cells, and impulses leave to other cells along the long appendages. At the same time, the cells themselves can be in one of two conditions, on or off. Impulses from some cells turn other cells on, and from others, off. If we assign cells that are on with a 1 and those that are off with the 0, we can record the cells' as actions using binary code and create a program for their interaction on a computer. It's amazing, isn't it? It's nothing but miraculous. <laughs> well, of course you're asking, how can we collect information about all the brain cells? After all, there are billions of them. Indeed, how would it be possible? I learned of a method from Spheroscope. In the future, digitalizing our conscious becomes an easy task. All that we need to do is record copies of our brain and combine them into one intellect. Yes, yes, excellent. Wait, what? And that's the last thing I remember, but it doesn't explain how we got here and what this place is. Well, it's not clear. We're only digital copies of our real selves, and we're located on a hard drive of a computer. Phenomenal. You and I are artificial intelligence. <laughs> oh, and we'll be eternally mulling about in this digital dump. How can we get out of here, smarty pants? I read that in the future, they learn to create artificial bodies for the digital brains. And how long do we need to wait? Ah. Oh, do you want to play the name game with cities? Los Angeles. Stockholm. Metropolis. I don't think that's actually a real city. Then Mars. Sirius. Smallville. <sighs> it's possible. Uh, uh. Some of the recollections Whoa. were not recorded in full or were damaged during digitalization. But in general, I think the experiment went very well. So how's our digitalized super brain doing? Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what it's doing right now. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's too much of a genius, does it? <laughs>